Okay, sorry for being late a little bit. Uh, so today we're going to go through our eighth recitation. Uh, we're going to start with assignment three. Uh, so we're going to have an overview today of assignment three and um, we'll give an overview just to understand the big picture so you can uh, start uh, working through these three deadlines that you have. So we're going to go through assignment three, then I'm going to explain the virtual memory subsystem and the virtual memory interface, and then we're going to go through the DOM VM and what does it provide and what limitation does it have. And then I'm going to explain what you need for the design document. Um, so an overview, so assignment three, you need to implement a virtual uh, memory subsystem. And the implementation, as you know, is divided into three incremental parts. Uh, first, you need to implement the uh, physical memory management, which is the core map. And then you need to go into the address space and TLB management, which is the user paging. And then you need to implement the swapping. We have three deadlines set for these uh, three parts. Uh, so each will have, you will have two weeks time to finish it. So these are the deadlines. And our next deadline is going to be not this Friday, the one after, for a working core map. So a physical, uh, so the virtual memory subsystem. Basic, basically, the virtual memory subsystem is just like a memory management technique that it maps virtual addresses used by the user process into physical address in, in the computer memory. So the user process, basically, what it sees is the a continuous address space. This is the virtual one. And then the operating system manages the address space and it assigns it to the real memory that is the physical memory uh, in the computer. And the unit, the hardware unit uh, that is part of the CPU that is uh, responsible for translating the addresses is the memory management unit. And that basically uh, translates the virtual addresses into a physical address. And that is what is, uh, we call, uh, uh, once you start implementing, is the TLB management. Uh, so you, you're going to implement a TLB that uh, MMU going to use to translate virtual addresses to physical addresses. So, and the what are the benefits of this uh, virtual memory uh, system? Basically, just like it provides, um, a, just like a continuous space for the user. So, and also it tells the user that you, just like you have the whole memory for you, you can use it. And uh, it also provides a smooth allocation for the user, just like. It gives them the uh, gives them the uh, the illusion that the memory that it has is continuous and smooth. Uh, 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 and also, it also um, has just like it provides a memory isolation, and this is the this is used to improve uh, the security for the memory, and also. Uh, it is able to conceptually use more memory than uh, the physical memory might have. And that's what we're going to uh, do uh, with the swapping. Just whenever the, we run out of, out of available pages, we're going to swap uh, some pages out and then and use that, um, these pages for uh, the new process that are requesting them. So this is the, um, the whole picture. Uh, so basically what you have is what you're going to implement a virtual memory subsystem that basically what it does it just like uh, translates or it's a technique just like translates virtual, virtual addresses to physical addresses and uh, that's what the virtual addresses are the one that are going to be used by the user processes uh, so that you can provide the illusion that you have a full uh, memory just going to be used by you no one, uh, no other process is going to use it, and also it just like provides them a, a smooth memory allocation and um, deallocation. So uh, uh, yeah, this, this is basically what the virtual memory subsystem is. Uh, any question? Okay. So we have several interfaces. So the you already have a virtual memory subsystem that is implemented for you, which is the dump VM. And basically, it's dump because it doesn't do that much. 
uh, and you shouldn't even look at it when you want to implement your own uh, virtual uh, memory subsystem. So uh, let's uh, give you an idea of these three parts that you need to implement, which is the uh, physical memory management. This is the first step. And then you need to implement the address space TLB management and then the swapping. We're going to go through each one of them. And uh, we're go I'm going to give you a general idea of how uh, these should work. Uh, so we can later on uh, in the next week, we can go into details of each one of them, which is the physical memory management and the uh, address space uh, TLB management, and then the swapping. So uh, we have a, v, uh, a header file that is already there that uh, we can go through and see which is the vm.h. So this is the vm.h. And what you have is basically um, three, uh, three interfaces. You have the VM bootstrap that is called when you boot uh, the kernel boots up and uh, you do different kind of uh, initialization into that. So basically, you're, for example, whatever data structure you implement for your virtual memory, you need to initialize it through the VM bootstrap um, and that function. And that's basically where, so we have a collection of just like bootstraps that are already in, uh, in main.c, I believe. So let's go through here. So in main.c, you will see uh, that uh, in the boot function, you have all these bootstraps that are already there for you. Uh, you have the VM uh, bootstrap already there, but it doesn't do anything. You, we're going to go through this when, we, uh, when I explain the dumb VM for you. Uh, so this is the uh, place where you need to just like uh, do all the initializations and whatever data structure you used into your uh, VM, you need to just like um, initialize it here, whether in that function or somewhere else. Because sometimes, uh, if you know, the core map needs to be initialized uh, before the VM boots, uh, uh, the other data structures are initialized. Um, and you can go through just like two or three uh, uh, posts by uh, the professor uh, on this course that explaining this. Uh, why should this happen? Um, so this is the uh, VM. So let's go through the VM again. OK, so this is the VM bootstrap. Uh, we have the VM fault function, which will ha uh, basically handle the uh, whatever faults happens, whether it's page or TLB. Uh, also, uh, we have the allocate K pages and the free K pages. And so basically, allocate K pages and free K pages allocate. Um, so when I call the allocate K pages, we'll allocate a chunk of pages, one or more pages. And the free going to do, uh, do the same, but destroying them, not allocating. Um, so if we go through the signature of this function, we will see that allocate k pages receive the number of pages. And that does make sense. OK, I'll give you, I need 10 pages to be allocated. And it will allocate it for me. But the free k pages receives only an address. And uh, this is one of the things that you need to think about because I'm only going to give you an address free uh, the pages starting at this address. So how many addresses should I free? This is one of the things that you need to figure out or implement. So your data structure should be uh, able to retrieve uh, that information. Yes? It, let's just say you would try to allocate 10 pages, and there aren't 10 contiguous pages in memory. OK. What should allocate pages do? Should it, right now, I just have a No, so you mean when you allocate the. Uh, yeah, the if you try to allocate 10 pages, but there aren't 10 continuous pages. Okay. What should happen? So the allocate k pages, this is the kernel one, and it has to be a continuous. So you mean there is a, c a continuous 10 pages, or? There is not. There is not. Oh, so, uh, so just like. So if there is not enough uh, 10 pages. So I need to go through that case. But what I know is, what I recall is uh, when you uh, call allocate k pages, it has to allocate uh, 10 contiguous pages. Yeah, but if the 10 contiguous 
Yeah. What should your function do? Right now, I just have a panic. Right now? OK. Uh, so basically, when you, when you don't have enough uh, free pages, you then you should swap. So uh, for now, uh, that's what I wanted to just like, do you mean before the third deadline? Yes. Uh, yeah, OK. Uh, yeah, that's what I need to go through. Uh, because okay. otherwise, if we talk in general about assignment to three, this is what swapping will do. Okay. Yeah. Yes? Well, uh, so that, this is one of the discussions that is already on the uh, discourse. Because uh, previously, it was able, you were able to just like use the dumb VM to allocate uh, uh, pages for yourself before getting to the swapping or before you get the swapping done. Uh, but what's going on right now is because we are providing tests for memory, memory leak, we cannot allow the dumb VM to uh, allocate some. Uh, because the problem is when you bootstrap to the point where you call VM bootstrap, there are, so what, you're going to use the dumb VM way of allocating. And the problem with that is that whatever you allocate with the VM is not going to be freed. So you're going to leak memory. And this is, if you go through the post on the discourse, the recent one, there is a discussion on this and should uh, tell you exactly what you need to do uh, about this. Uh, so this is one of the differences that we had from this year from the last year. Uh, so uh, the problem was just like before VM, you cannot, the K malloc, you cannot use it. Uh, because you still don't have the core map initialized and everything. But since, uh, but if you don't want to leak memory, you should have the uh, kmalloc ready. And that means you need to initialize the core map. The core map should be ready. And that's why I said that you need to make sure that the core map is initialized at a very early stage of the uh, kernel boot. Yeah. But for your case, I, I think I need to uh, double check uh, what should happen before these deadlines, I mean, before the swapping is done. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, I need also to edit some of the slides, so I'm going to uh, post the, uh, an updated one uh, later on today or tomorrow. So uh, also the uh, TLB should down, the TLB should down all this basically will flesh out a TLB entry. Uh, you don't need to worry about these. So what you need to worry about for your first uh, deadline is the alloc k pages and the free k pages, and uh, the VM bootstrap. Uh, the VM vault and TLB should down and sh should down all. Sh these are for the second and third uh, deadlines. Let's see if there is anything else to go through here. No. Okay. So this is the physical memory management. This is the first part yeah, that you need to implement, which is the physical memory management. And this is for the first uh, deadline. Uh, you should also have a, a core map implemented here. So the second part is the address space management. Uh, you should be familiar with the address space. So we went through that address space header file before for the file syscalls. And the interfaces that we have is um, as create, destroy, copy. Copy is the one that uh, you should have used with fork. Um, we have activate, deactivate, activate basically just like, uh, so if we have an entry in the TLP uh, for a process and another process want to come and get that entry, then uh, so any process should just like activate that TLB entry for the current process. Deactivate it will just like uh, deactivate a TLB entry for that process that I'm going out. Uh, so just like whenever a, an, a process want to use a TLB entry, it should call the activate, and that should also be used in um, your, uh, I think, in one of the syscalls too. Um, as defined stack basically returns uh, a, uh, defines a stack region in the address space and returns a pointer to the uh, to that stack um, to the user stack. These are the new ones that you're gonna deal with, which is uh, define region, uh, prepare load, and complete load. So let's go through the address space dot h. We can better explain things over there. So, OK. This is the address uh, space header file. 
This is the address space structure that we're going to go through it later on. Uh, so let's go through the functions. As we said, uh, create will create an empty address space. Copy will create a, an exact copy of the past uh, address space. Uh, activate will make the current process address space the one currently uh, seen by the processor. And that means just like activating, activating, uh, activating that address space on the TLB entry. So just like getting a TLB entry for it. Uh, deactivate unloads the current process address space, so it's currently uh, so it isn't currently seen by the processor. So as destroy, it's going to destroy the address space. Define region. So uh, for define region, basically we know if you remember the the process uh, model or the diagram that uh, I showed you, we have in the address space we have different regions. We have a stack region. We have data region, we have code region, and we have a heap region. So whenever you want to define a region, you're going to use the as define region. And we're going to go through example uh, showing you uh, how this is used. As a prepare load, basically when you call an executable or when you want to load an executable file, uh, so it's, you're, you need to call that function before you load data into the data segment, or let's say, uh, whatever content uh, uh, you want to load from the executable into the regions of the address space. You need to call the prepare load before, before loading uh, data into the address space. Once you're done loading data into the address space, code, data, whatever it is, you need to call the as complete load. Um, and this is so one of the major examples for using these functions is the load elf uh, file. And that's what we're going to go next through. So it's in current is called load elves. So if we go through the load, uh, load elf uh, function, so basically the load elf is uh, called whenever we want to load an executable into the uh, address space. Uh, and that's, so load an elf executable user program into the current address space. So, so this is the for loop. There is a for loop in, the, in that function. This for loop basically will, uh, will go through the regions that are defined in the executable and find out how many regions does that user process needs. For example, so we have different regions, as I said. We have just like um, data region, code region, heap region, and there could might be other regions too. So for each region I go through, I'm going to, as you can see, call the as defined region. And I'm going to give it an address, a size, and also I'm going to define some flags, which is these are the permissions on that region. So for example, um, a data region or a data segment, you can read and write into it. But a code segment, you cannot write into it. It's only read only. Uh, it should be read only. Otherwise, you're going to override the user code if you're going to write to it. So this is how we define regions. We're going to give the address and also the size and also what are the permissions for that region. Once we define the regions, then we're going to then, as you can see, first we're going to call as prepare uh, load, which is called before I load the content into the region. So now I define the regions. I know how many regions I have. Now I need to load these, uh, the content of these regions from the executable. And this is what I should do before that, which is calling uh, as a prepare load. And then I start loading uh, whatever, from, whatever data or content I have from the uh, executable. And this is done through the load segment, as you can see here. So once I'm done loading all the content into the regions, then I'm going to call as a complete load. And that means I'm done loading uh, content from the executable into the regions that I defined in the uh, user address space. So this is for the second part, uh, or part of the second part. So we have. 
uh, you have the address space management, uh, all the uh, as set of functions that you need to define, and also you have the TLB management that you need to implement. Um, yeah. So, any questions on the address space management part? Yes. Is it all part two? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is, so address space and TLB management is part two. Uh, so, we have also one more uh, syscall that you need to implement, which is the S break, and this is for the heap. Uh, so, basically, the S break is a um, sets a process break and that means or let's say uh, allocate memory so one of our if I define a region for the heap then the size will be basically the initial size will be zero and uh, as I call s break I should just like allocate memory in the heap using that system call uh, and you can go through the details of that syscall in the man pages let's go through it um, Let's break. Uh, okay. So this is the S break uh, man pages. Uh, so it tells you just like set process break or allocate memory. It receives an amount. So uh, basically, this is the end uh, address of a process heap region. Uh, so the S break call adjusts the break by the amount, which means basically allocate memory on the heap. Um, yeah, you can go through the details here. So here tells you what I told you, which is the heap region is initially empty. So at process startup, the beginning of the heap region is the same as the end, uh, and may thus be uh, retrieved using S break zero. And as you call S break, it will just like start uh, allocating memory for you and bypassing the the amount of memory that you need uh, on the heap. Okay, and so the third part is the swapping. Swapping, we don't have anything for it yet into the OS 161. This is, we don't have a slide for it. I presented you with the stuff that already exists, uh, exists on the OS 161, the interfaces for VM that already exists. So you need to Add to these, and also for swapping, there is nothing currently exists, and that's what you need to implement. So this is for the VM interface. Uh, uh, so this is what the virtual memory is used for. So basically, so we have we need to provide an illusion to the user using the address space, uh, and that would be the size of the physical memory that we have. And then so we need to just like handle the translation between the uh, user virtual address space into the or virtual memory into the physical memory. And that's what the MMU does for us using the TLB management. Um, uh, yeah, so this is basically the VM and VM interfaces that currently exist and what you, you need to implement. Any questions on the VM interfaces? Okay, so let's go through the dumb VM. As I said, we have a v virtual memory that is already implemented for us, but it's dumb. It doesn't do anything. Uh, nothing much is done, actually. This is the most, most cor uh, more correct uh, phrase for it. Um, so let's start going through it. So we're going to go through all the three parts, which is physical memory management and address user uh, address space and swapping in dump VM and we'll see what do we have and what should be uh, done and what is currently happening with the dump VM. So let's open the dump VM. Okay. So for the uh, dumb VM, we have, the, again, the same interfaces that we had for the physical memory uh, management, which is allocate K pages and the free K pages. Uh, but what is implemented in there? We're going to see that. So 
for VM bootstrap, there is nothing implemented. So nothing is initialized. If we go through the um, alloc pages, so it will basically call get p pages or get uh, physical pages of that size. So what will happen here is it will call get p pages and get p pages will steal memory. Memory. So what's happening in DOM VM currently is just like this. So this is the this physical memory that we have. When we boot the kernel, the kernel will get its space from the physical memory. And what is available for us to use is starting from after the kernel memory. This is where the first uh, physical address will point to, or the pointer will point to. And the last uh, physical address is the last page in the physical uh, memory. So whatever between the first address and last address, this is what we have available. What does DOM VM do is basically, um, when you call alloc uh, k pages, it will allocate k pages for you, and when you call free, it will not it will do nothing. So what whenever you call allocate n pages, ten pages, it will allocate ten pages. Then you call it allocate five more pages, it will allocate five more, and that means fifteen pages are now done. If I call k free uh, with dump VM, as you can see here, the Three K pages does nothing. Basically, leaks memory, um, and that's what's currently happening. So it will basically keeps adjusting the first uh, adder, uh, the first physical address pointer to the point that it reaches the last physical address. Once it's, it's reached that, it will panic that we are out of memory. Um, so, okay. So if we go through the, for example, uh, if we go through the get p pages, as you can see here, it will call uh, ram steelman. So what happens in ram steelman, let's see here. So basically, it will get the number of pages and the size equal number of pages of the current page size. It will keep adding. Once the first address plus the size is greater than the last address, it will return zero, which basically it will panic. So this is what is currently happening. Maybe you might uh, wonder, OK, so how does the K, uh, so we were just like allocating memory using the K malloc and uh, free, and it was a freeing memory. So as long as you're freeing memory less than a page, of, page size, then that should be handled for you. But once you exceed that, it, it, it is not handled. So, uh, so let's say allocating large chunk of pages, uh, that's going to be a problem uh, currently for you. Because uh, if it's more than what's available, you won't get anything. Uh, if it's less, you will get, and while you keep allocating, once you reach the maximum size of the RAM size or the available size that you have, which is the size between the first and last address. Once you reach that size, then uh, the uh, the kernel will basically uh, the dump VM will panic. So this is what's happening in the dump VM for physical memory management, um, and also if you can see that. One of the stuff that is done in DOM VM, and you should also worry about, is DOM VM. So in get p pages, you can see that it is acquiring a lock. Uh, so you should have a synchronization primitive used with the physical memory. Why? Because the physical memory basically is a shared system wide. So you need a kind of synchronization primitive to just like um, uh, so it is a shared resource, then you need to protect it using one of the uh, synchronization primitives that you've implemented. So this is basically how the dump uh, VM handles the physical memory management. Um, it's very basic. So please don't go through the dump. Many students just like used to go through or copy the dump VM file, and then they try to just like modify the file uh, based on what dump VM had. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't even look at the dump VM when you implement your uh, 
physical memory or the virtual memory subsystem. So don't follow what is there. Uh, so here I'm explaining things to you because I need to, you to get an idea. Uh, so what, how the things are working in OS 161. So now you can go back and see what you sh how you should improve it. So as we said, the limitations that we have for uh, dump VM physical memory management is basically it doesn't free what is allocated. Uh, there is no reclaim or recycling of pages. Uh, it keeps stealing until it runs out of uh, pages. How should we improve this? By implementing the core map. So how should we think about the core map? The core map basically is just like a data structure that keeps track of uh, the uh, pages that you have. All the information that you need to keep about a page, you should keep it in the core map. Uh, so let's say it is something similar to just like a process table, let's say. So the process table keeps track of all the information of a process. The core map is a data structure that uh, keeps a track of whatever information you need for every page. So let's say what kind of information you need for pages is basically whether that page is available or not. Um, it is, so yeah, what, whether it is uh, available or not, maybe. Uh, so I don't recall the stuff uh, clearly, but we can uh, go through them. So what, that's what we're going to go through next week in details. So, but in general, that's what the core map needs to uh, keep track of is whatever information you need for the pages. And also keep in mind that, so the core map is a fixed size. So that means what happens once you, your kernel boot, you should figure out how much memory you have and then, or how much pages you have, and you're gonna allocate that size for the core map and it should be fixed. So it's not like the process and uh, let's say the file table that it wasn't of, of a fixed size. So you have that number of pages. You need to allocate that number for the core map. This is one of the steps that you need to do, which is, um, so if we see here, so uh, after we have the kernel, this is the, as we said, this is the first address. So when you initialize the, your core map, you need to count how many space does the, your core map does it need. And then you need to shift that first address again uh, to point to the end of the core map allocation. So your physical memory basically will be something between, uh, after, sorry, after the core map to the last address. So the additional thing will be here is the core map to add. So this is one of the stuff that you need to do, which is figuring out how much memory you need for the core map, allocating it, and then uh, you need to uh, shift the uh, first address pointer so that it points to after uh, the, uh, the, after the point that the core map ends. Yes? Um, I'm just going to ask for like, a general question. Yes. So like, suppose that there are like four pages, like 0, 1, 2, 3. So like, suppose that you create like uh, uh, 1 and 3. OK. And then like, uh, what's going to happen? Like, I was thinking that like, the pages have to be uh, contiguous. Contiguous, yeah. No, so you need to allocate, so in the kernel you need to allocate, there is, so the kernel doesn't use a TLB. The TLB, for example, is used for the, for the, with the user, and that's why uh, when we have the TLB implemented, we can just like allocate different pages uh, in different uh, uh, places, and the TLB will handle getting these pages. Oh, yeah, like but in the kernel, the kernel has no TLB, so what happens is that the kernel has to just like allocate a contiguous pages. So if it doesn't find contiguous, then let's say you want four pages. If it doesn't find four pages, then that's when the swapping comes in. And then you need to decide which page you need to swap out in order to just like um, get these four uh, pages uh, available. So for these functions, which is allocate pages and free K pages, this has to allocate contiguous pages for these functions, because these are kernel functions.
kernel has no TLB. The TLB is used by the user. And that's why, as I said, you can allocate different pages in different places. And then the TLB will uh, just like translate it for the user and it will know where, where are they. But in the kernel, when you implement these, uh, these functions, you need to allocate contiguous pages because the kernel has no TLB thing. So whatever uh, you allocate has to start and should be contiguous all the, to the number of pages that you need to allocate and you need to return. So if you don't have that much, then you need to swap out. Yeah. And before you swap out, you need to just like figure out what to swap out. This is, so these are all the stuff that you need to think about. So as I said, so uh, the core map should come after the kernel and the uh, initialization. So any questions on the physical memory management for the dump VM? OK. Um, still have, OK. So the user address. Um, so if we go through the. If we go through the uh, address space, uh, the structure for the address space, we will see that, so I brought it up here. So if we're running the dump VM, this is what we have. What does that mean? So we have vi virtual base one, physical base one, and end pages. This is the size. So, and this is points to the code region or the code segment. We also have another uh, vBase P base and M pages that points to the uh, data segment. Uh, and also, uh, we have the as a stack. This is the base, the pointer to the uh, stack base. So as you can see here, the dump VM has no heap. It only defines two regions, and that's it. It's only a code region and a data region. And no more than these two regions you can define. So for example, if the executable has more regions, that cannot be handled by the DOM VM. DOM VM only supports two regions. And I mean it by numbers, two regions. So no more than these two regions. So it has the fix physical base for that region and virtual base for that region. And what's the size of that region? Uh, yeah, so this is the DOM VM. But what you need to do, so as you can see, fixed number of regions we have. We don't have heap. That's what you need to uh, implement using the S break also. And we have a fixed size stack. So one of the limitations for dump VM is just like when you allocate a stack, it will allocate, for example, let's say um, uh, four pages for the stack. And that means if the executable or if the user process only needs one page, I'm going to again, using the dump VM, it will, only, uh, it will again allocate the four page. It, will not, it won't allocate the one page. So that means a waste of memory. So we have a fixed uh, size stack. And it, if you go over this, it will just like panic. So you, the user stack shouldn't go over the defined size. Where you can find the defined size, it's, uh, so this is it. Defined DOM VM stack pages, which is 18, which is uh, 72K. Uh, so this is the maximum uh, stack size that you can have. OK, so what you, how to improve it? You need to uh, just like have the ability to just like define a variable number of regions. So if you have more than two regions, then you should be able. And also variable stack size. So the stack size shouldn't be fixed. So it should be variable. OK, so and the, let's go through the address translation in uh, DOM VM. So we know that the stacks starts at address 80 million growing down, and the heap uh, grow, grows up. So the address translation in, um, in the DOM VM goes like this. So we have the V base, we have the P base, and we have the uh, size of each region. So what will happen is, Let's say we got a VM fault. So we will get, uh, and that will pass to us a, a fault address, which you can see here. So what I will do is first I will get the offset, which is by, I'll, first you need to figure out this address belongs to which region. 
This is the first thing you need to do. How you should do this? By uh, so using the vBase plus the size of the region. So this is you can uh, figure out what is the size of that region. Then uh, once you identify what address, to what region does this address uh, that generates false belong, then you can uh, compute the physical address. How does the dumb VM do it? This is how it does it. So it will get the address minus the vBase, and then so it will get the address should be somewhere here, let's say, and then it will uh, take out the vBase and plus the physical base, and it will get the physical address. So this way of translation is only used by the dumb VM. This shouldn't be u used by you, so you shouldn't look at this uh, when you implement your address translation. So how should we improve this as implementing the page table? So and the page table is basically the data structure that should translate uh, physical addresses into uh, virtual addresses into physical addresses for you. For the uh, physical page addresses into the, uh, sorry, virtual page addresses to physical page addresses. Swapping, we have no swapping in dumb VM. Uh, it will basically panic once it runs out of memory. How should we improve it? By swapping out pages once we don't have enough free pages available. Or let's say enough free contiguous pages available. Uh, this is for the swapping. And then finally, we have the uh, design document. Please, this time, try to do the design document. So th today, we went on an overview I could start with the core map today, but that wasn't right because you should have an idea what the whole assignment three is about. Because once you get an idea, you can go through all these files, you can understand what should be implemented and how should be implemented. Assignment three has a lot of dependencies, so make sure to uh, write your design document before you start implementa uh, implementation. And this is why an assignment two, up until let's say the last two days, we still got questions on what is a file table? How should I allocate a file table? So if you don't have a design document, you won't be able really to uh, finish the assignment three in its entirety. So make sure to have this stuff in design document, which is the data structure, how you're going to implement them, the core map, address space, and page spa uh, table, and also the functions. Uh, the VM fault and all the as uh, set of functions. And then also mention the synchronization that needs to be used. Thank you.